a voyage will take Hokulei away from Hawaii for three years, you would be sailing at least 45,000 nautical miles. It would be by far the most dangerous thing that we would ever consider doing as a voyaging family. The risks are huge, but on the other side, the possibilities are enormous. We're not gonna change the world, but we're gonna go and build a network of people around the earth who are gonna change it. And our job is to help them be successful. Our mission is to inspire all people to Malama Honua, or to care for island earth. This voyage is really just a catalyst to get people to feel like they're a part of a movement. We had always intended that the complexion of this voyage should reflect the nature of a very large voyaging community coming together to support the Malama Honua mission and vision. You think about it, the ocean doesn't separate things. It connects it. The next ones understand that they do have a purpose for being here. My hope for today's generation is that they can harness our ability and then to elevate it and carry us into the future. As Hokulea prepares to leave the Pacific for the first time ever to gather and share global strategies from Alama Honua or caring for planet Earth, it became clear her ohana here in Polynesia is already successfully implementing forward-thinking sustainability initiatives. As a new crew left Pongo Pongo to continue the journey down into the colder waters of Aotearoa, we took a step back to look at some of these ambitious and innovative Malama Honua projects in Polynesia, rooted in traditional knowledge, all aimed at saving our precious natural resources. In my opinion, the greatest environmental, single environmental issue of our time, of our time in the 21st century, is to protect these oceans. The ocean is our front yard. It is our home. It is our mother, in a sense. It nurtures us. You could almost say that oceans is part of our genetics. Honoring this ancestral tie to the ocean, the Cook Islands has committed to the largest marine park in history by a single country one that will encompass over 925,000 square miles. That is our gift to our future generations, but also to the world. Because everybody now realizes that the Pacific is the biggest factory of oxygen manufacturing. Pacific Islanders have an intimate understanding of the importance of the natural environment. But the tragic irony is that the effects of environmental irresponsibility will wreak the most havoc on these people who've done the least to cause them. In the Pacific, we are at the forefront of all the challenges associated with rising sea levels and climate change. And while the Cook Islands' carbon footprint is a drop in the bucket compared to industrialized nations, they have a policy and a plan in place to become the world's first zero carbon emissions country by 2020. The other reason for doing that, apart from the environmental uh, benefits, is really economical. It'll save us millions of dollars in buying oil, and we have this free energy supply that's beamed down on us from heaven every day. Seeking out alternative energy sources that not only capitalize on, but maintain the island's natural beauty is also the fundamental main driver for these islands' economies, tourism. The mayor was able to see an opportunity for a symbiotic relationship between a single economy and his local population. By having a very wealthy tourist industry, they're bringing in a certain clientele that is not only able but willing to pay for the beauty that surrounds them. Bora Bora overhauled the water treatment systems via a public-private partnership where these luxury resorts cover the majority of the cost for distributed water that benefits not only the tourism industry, but all residents. It sets a really good example where if you're going to develop a massive luxury resort area, then you have to pay for it. But you're paying with your clientele's dollars. It's a very specialized example, but what we're looking for in this Malama Honua voyage are examples that we can take for Hawaii and for other island nations and for the world. And that's exactly what happened when the Va'a visited the village of Ha'apu to learn about their traditional Rahui fisheries management system. Ah, le Rahui. 
ere me open it at the it at the trahui tapu era fa ho tu at mo one of Ha'apu's delicacies, the Pahua clam, is an indicator of just how healthy and abundant these reefs are that surround the area. The Pahua clams were over-harvested in the past. Rahui brought back the balance between the people of Ha'apu and the ocean that enriches their lives. Mauti hukulea, Ha'apu huahine, i itehiai tono pro e te hutu a o te pro. And when we come back from world renowned computer game programmers to Grammy nominated musicians, everyone's coming along to help spread these stories of Malama Honua. Aloha mai e na mamoa haloa mai ke kahi au au ai ke kahi au au aku ke ia pai aina. E ia mako na hoa o Kaleo Oivi, e launa mai noi ke ia ha ule lau ma Oivi TV nei. Um, what did she just say? Stick around, you'll find out. Bye-bye. Kaleo Oivi, a new Hawaiian language learning series now on Oivi TV, digital channel 326 and online at oivi.tv. The Hawaiian language is full of life. But learning it is not a game. Then again, it could be. Hulo and other inspired games available from Kamehameha Publishing. Oh, brother, today was so good fun. It was a great day of talking with everyone. But now let's eat some leftovers from your gathering last night. You know, the bundled leaves, the dried fish, peppery water, sweet onion, and a little Hawaiian salt. What you want to do is have the leftovers from Ikapone for the big paina with all the dry aku, with the poi, with the chili pepper water, with the mawi onion, with the side action of the Hawaiian pa'akai. That's what you meant to say, right? Without Hawaiian, it's just not the same. Join us by visiting ahapunanaleo.org. My name is Keone. Aloha, my name is Ikaika. My name is Hale. And we are Nahoa. And you're watching... Oh, TV. As Hokulea's worldwide voyage gains momentum, she's attracting and inspiring communities from around the globe to venture on this journey along with her. She's also drawn the attention of noted celebrities whose life's work centers around saving our planet and her natural resources. I'm really inspired by what the Hokulea is doing to engage people creatively about conservation of our oceans through a great adventure. What Nainoa is doing is uh, really part of an environmental renaissance. It's a beautiful story that the Hokulea is telling and I'm really proud to be a small part of it and use my art to support them. From the painter whose stunning oceanscapes embody the beauty of this underwater world, to the explorers and filmmakers whose work places them in the middle of this work of art. While in Samoa, Hokulea's master navigator got to spend time with these ocean elders in this playground under the sea. The fact that Nainoa was there for me was exciting and for him to be in our world underwater and watching him look around almost like a kid. I was watching him discovering the world that he's protecting by the Okulea going around the world. They are just heroic. They are my mentors. They're those that I just uh, are inspired by. To have Okulea reconnect us to nature. For me, it's symbolic of a connection with the planet and a mission to relate the understanding of the ocean uh, to every human being on the planet. This is a moment in time, as never before and maybe as never again, to take this knowledge, take this wisdom, and change the way we do things. We, we have to. We have a chance to get it right. And one of the best reasons for hope is Nainoa Thompson and his voyagers, all of us. Another voyager of note who was drawn to Hokulea and her mission to Malama Honua 
is this computer game programmer turned environmentalist. He revolutionized the gaming industry nearly two decades ago when he acquired the rights to the world's most popular video game, Tetris. In 2007, he founded Blue Planet Foundation and is now putting the strategic pieces together necessary to wipe out the planet's dependence on fossil fuels. What happens to that fossil fuel when we burn it? It goes into the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide and then it goes into the ocean where eventually it will kill our coral. It's a third of the ocean life that we're talking about that depends on coral. And if we wipe out the coral, it's a disaster of biblical proportions. All the things that you find on the canoe are the very things that we need to steer us clear of this huge danger which is coming at us. It's that bravery, perseverance, leadership involved and that need to get back in touch with nature. So it's very relevant and you need to be up there with us sailing the canoe and averting the rocks and getting past this point. Whether they're sailing along on board or supporting the crew from land with encouraging songs of aloha, Hokulea and her holokai are inspiring great talent to join their cause. For me to get invited to participate on any level, uh, it's just been a real honor. This is a new hit right here. Hokulea is going to take this song around the world. I just hope that the song inspires the navigators that are on the worldwide voyage now and just wanting to show them that at home here in Hawaii we're so proud and just really inspired by the work that they're doing, you know, and the journey they're taking, the courage they're showing. So I was really singing for them. These are the young, the navigators that know just how from the stars and the clouds. You know, as a kid, stories of the hokulea, those are the things that you base your idea of what courage is, what's exciting in the world, just the idea of adventure. Jack and his wife Kim began their own Malama Honua effort in 2003 when they founded the Kokua Hawaii Foundation. We have a lot of different programs, establishing school gardens, sending kids on field trips out into nature or to farms, trying to connect kids to their food, just trying to be more sustainable and independent. We also work with Plastic Free Hawaii, getting people to eliminate single-use plastic from their life. When you walk on any east shore in Hawaii, you really start to see all that marine debris washing up, all these bottle caps and things that we don't really need to be using. And so to know that the hukulea is taking those ideas and going outside of Hawaii and going to be connecting the whole world, basically, worldwide voyage, that's an exciting aspect of it to me as well. And another reason I want to be involved is just to be able to spread that word. Coming up, Hokulea's mission literally goes global with a single message delivered in a bottle. All of the epic stories of great cultures have their heroes, guardians, and legends. In Hawaii, these 21st century masters are tapping into ancestral memory in times of modern disconnect to sustain our Hawaii for generations to come. Join us for Nalawea The Masters, an original series available now on OEV TV, channel 326. Our mo'olelo are rich and layered with meaning. They're timeless truths revealed by our scholars and storytellers. Kahonua Ola and other Hawaiian resource materials available from Kamehameha Publishing. Aloha, I am Lehua Kalima and I watch OEV TV. Amongst all the enormous challenges we have across this planet, quietly behind and underneath this is a movement of millions of people that are rejecting the notion that the Earth's not going to be okay, rejecting the notion that they can't make a difference, and that there's strangers everywhere that are doing what they can do in their part. The job is to come together. 
Over 2,300 of these individuals came together in Apia, Samoa for the United Nations Small Island Developing States Conference to address the unique vulnerabilities of these island nations. While at the conference, Hokulea and her crew were honored with a visit from United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. It's a rare experience that you would bring on someone, a global leader, that's not there to represent the interests of only their nation, but they're there to represent the leadership of the whole planet. And, and that's the kind of individuals that we needed to connect to because of the global nature of this voyage. I'm honored to be part of Hokulea's worldwide voyage. Mm -hmm. I'm inspired by its global mission. As you tour the globe, I will work to rally more leaders to our common cause of ushering in a more sustainable future and the life of dignity for all. Uh -huh. Signed by Secretary General of the United Nations. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. And there's a moment in time that we are looking at getting back together in June of 2016 in New York Harbor where we will sail where they are looking at creating a document, a declaration for the world's oceans from the membership of the world. No one has all of the solutions, but I think what we kind of believe in our partnership is that if we start kind of piecing that together, we're going to get somewhere. Sometimes all you got to do is look for what's already working and try to inspire people to do more of it. Hokulea crew members were there to engage with groups representing issues from green energy and leadership to food security. All involved were interested to see how voyaging fits into a worldview that may be useful to everyone. I think what's happening here is the genesis of ideas, a genesis of new ways of thinking, brand new worldviews from the islanders' perspective. It's seen it from the island and its relationship to the oceans. And that is because our Earth is only one island in this immense ocean of space, but it's the only one we got that has life. And just 200 nautical miles north of Apia, Hokulea came upon this pristine jewel in the immense Pacific, the island of Olohenga, more commonly referred to as Swain's Island. Swain's Island, as you can see, it's a remote island. Through studies, it is one of the important stopovers for seafarers. It is the prime example of how a determined people with a deep connection to place have sustained themselves and the island's resources through changing times in industry and now on a position their home as a model for sustainable living. Everything on this island was strictly conserved from our fish resources, which is our greatest source of food, was our ocean. Swain's once supported a booming copra industry that yielded 40 tons of dried coconut every three months. To ensure this thriving ecosystem, they planted over 800 acres of kumuniu, or coconut trees, maintaining balance in this precious environment. In the essence of here is what Hawaii should be. That becomes both the reality and the symbol of the things that we hope for in our islands. Swain's the place of this amazing history, the swains of this place, that it should be a school for the earth. My sense is what's missing in the rest of the world that's in swains is that there is a deep connection between all of you to a single place on the planet that you call home. This aloha for Aina, our special place, starts right here with each of us fostering the very spirit of Malama Honua and an even greater aloha for our collective home, Island Earth. And when we come back, Hokulea completes her journey to call her Polynesian ohana together with a warrior's welcome in Aotearoa. Meliapana said that last night was wonderful with the elders and teachers sharing their thoughts to take care of each other, take care of our families and of our land. There was just so much power there. Actually, what I was trying to say was that last night, Ikapone, I was with all the kumu and all the kupuna, and it was so maikai. They were sharing the mo'olelo and reminding us that we have to malama the aina, malama each other, and malama the ohana. I tell you, the night was so full of mana. She's right. Without Hawaiian, it's just not the same. Wait, did you say I was right? Visit ahapunanaleo.org.
Aloha nui o wau no o Aaron Sala. Aloha o wau o Snowbird Bento. A nana maua ya o iwi and Hikiana Lea had sailed more than 3,500 nautical miles, reconnected with family and friends at over 15 different ports, and confirmed that we as Polynesians have traditional knowledge to bring to bear on modern day sustainability issues, methods that are gathering international attention. And on her final leg in the familiar waters of the Pacific, she gathered her family, Ohana Hokulea. Just being a crew member of Hukulea, it was uh, one of those things of, uh, I suppose, rekindling that relationship with uh, our Matamu, the older sister. And you could say that this older sister-brother relationship epitomizes the beauty and destiny of the Pilina Polenikia or Polynesian relationships that define the Ohana Hukulea. I didn't know Nick, but I guess we were supposed to meet each other because I watched Hokulea come into Oitangi Bay in 1985. Flash forward 10 years later, and we are at Kauai High. Makali is built, and I met Nick. My name's uh, Nick Ma. I'm from uh, Aotearoa. And he would continue to come, and eventually, you know, we got to talking, and we realized that we were there when Hokulea came into Oitangi, and so for the two of us, they're like, what? You know, and he remembered meeting my dad. There was something special between us, you know, and... Um... Over the years, we've developed this really close relationship. The bond is a ba'a. As tangata whenua, it's an honor to be sailing with the waka. They brought the knowledge back to Aotearoa. Toyota represents the latest wave of Māori navigators who will now carry this knowledge forward to future generations in fulfillment of one of the goals of this voyage. This Malama Honua voyage, a big part of it is training the next generation. Constantly providing that uh, atmosphere where they can grow into that is a key thing. And this duo of next generation navigators took on the task of being the guides, eyes, and ears for this crew's leg of the journey. And after 14 days at sea, they pulled Aotearoa from the ocean, completing another successful voyage. I'm extremely proud of them. I'm extremely proud of all the young navigators and future leaders that are coming up because they're accepting a basic commitment for the future of voyaging. And as the canoes approached Waitangi Bay for the first time in 29 years, it was a sight to behold, not only for those who had arrived here decades ago, but also for this new generation of sailors and navigators who are now making their mark on history. The beauty of it is this next generation that's here with us, the younger guys. Because they've heard these stories before, but now they're experiencing it with their own eyes, their own ears, and you know, they'll take this with them. And the whole idea of the voyaging was for them to start creating their own stories, you know, their own voyage, and it's happening. And for this brother and sister brought together by their mama hukulea, this was a great chapter in their ongoing story of Pilina Ohana Va'a. To be back here again really is a dream come true. Never realizing at the beginning of this year that this would be happening for me now. We grew up together in voyaging. For me to be able to be on the canoe bringing him home. Words cannot express. This was a homecoming or bringing home family. This voyage is so large. It will take everybody's collective effort. One of the greatest strengths that we have is that we have brothers and sisters spread throughout the Pacific. That's what's really important, is calling them all home. Come back home. Mahalo nui for joining us from Alama Honua, Ohana Hokulea. Our voyage has just begun. Home 
is in the east The west is just direction But everything plays a part To your return back to the start To come back home Come back home Come back home